All right. So it looks like we're live. Before we get to any questions, I'm just going to talk to you for a bit. <clears throat> so I haven't done a live in a little while. I'm pretty excited to do one. Um, it's a weird time of the day. It's almost 6 p.m. where I live, so I know a lot of you guys may be getting off work or in the middle of something or dinner or whatever, so totally don't expect too many people to hop on here. But if you have time and you want to hop on, feel free to ask me questions. You don't have to ask me just drop shipping stuff. Um, in fact, I've, it's totally cool if we just talk about whatever. Um, I'm just kind of getting back into the live game for a little bit. And this is not one of the VIP group lives. This is just specifically one of the YouTube lives that everybody has access to. Um, I have not done the first VIP live group yet, uh, or live live video in the group yet, but I plan on doing that very soon. So feel free to hop in and ask anything you want. Eric, hi. Gag, hi. Appreciate you stopping by. And uh, yeah, feel free to just ask me stuff. But I'm just going to be hanging out on the computer, doing my thing, and... Super happy to have you. Are you still doing photography stuff? Yes. Yes, I am. Um, I do actually, I don't do too much photography myself. I do a lot of video work. And yes, and that's one thing that maybe I'll, I'll bring up here in a little bit is because of the video, I do have a video production business that I co-own with a friend. And yeah, we make commercials for businesses here in town and some bigger businesses that operate in multiple states. but. A lot of weddings and stuff like that but there is a photo side and that uh, my business partner handles that side because he's all into the photo stuff and I'm not good at it how about those Braves Julian I don't know much about Braves where are the Braves from the Atlanta Braves or is there a different Braves are you talking about the Chiefs all right Eric hi Cameron what exactly is drop down menu which one should I create a new shop with so the drop down menu is a certain type of kind of like shop creation option that some people have. Um, not everybody gets access to it. Um, that's why you've in the past had people who can sell shops that instantly get approved, but then you know sometimes they get denied really quickly and that's not usually because of the person who's selling them, it's just because that's like the game on Facebook. Um, a lot of people who have that option, what they do is they will and I haven't really used it, so I'm, I'm, my, I plan to be able to talk more about it, but I don't really do it too much. I kind of stick with old shops, but we're learning more and more as these things move forward that it's not... Don't take what I'm about to say completely as truth. It's more of like a thought right now. Um, I can't promise, but to me it's starting to look like old shops kind of just die and lose momentum and then there's not really bringing them back. There's not really a bringing them back or at least not an easy way to do it. So the reason these drop down menu shops are cool, which is basically what it is, is it's just you have this option where you can easily create a shop and it's instantly approved and ready to go. And you can do it over and over and over again and it's not a big deal. Not Again, not everybody has that. But people have been using these to just create shops one after another and if you've had that experience I know I have where I've created a shop thrown a bunch of products on it, and then it blows up and sells so much and then it just slowly dies and then after that it's like I might get a, a trickle of sales here or there but it that kind of doesn't do much and I'm still trying to revive a few shops that I have that just aren't aren't doing very well and yeah so um, the benefit is that you can create them let them explode and then as it dies you don't care you just create another one kill that shop and then you just by the time it's dead you're already it's you're already gone and you're moving on to the next shop and then the next shop and you just kind of you ride those waves instead of just like hoping this one shop always performs yep all right patricia hi douglas garcia are you doing just shops or what other automation business are you running um i mean i do marketplace and shops right now i am doing a, a, a youtube video that i'm like I kind of am a few days into where it'll be like, I don't know if it's a 30 day challenge yet or a, just until something sells, but I'm basically listing the same product over and over and over again um, until somebody eventually buys it and then we'll see kind of like what that listing looked like. Or nobody will buy it and after like a week or two, I'll just kill the video and just post what I have. But um, I pretty much just do shops. This 
and then I have my business that I, you know, help run too. So that's what I do basically. What should I be selling now? Well, gag. Um, I don't have too many bestsellers to give away, really. Um, I will talk about here in a little bit what I think is upcoming that you should be preparing for. But um, most of my bestsellers I've already given away in the VIP group. So I'm sorry to keep that from this, but it, it's its own thing now, and it's to reward the people who you know, want to pay for the VIP group as much as I know that that sucks for some of you. But uh, the other group and some of the comments here have just gotten so spammy that a lot of that information just doesn't get used and like that the groups are like 13,000 people now. So um, now the VIP groups only at like 60 some people. So those those free products I give away that I take from all of my shops as best sellers, they go a lot further and help a lot better. I feel like being in the VIP group. So I don't have too many, but if I if I feel like it may be in this live, I'll do a little bit. Also, in this live, I don't know how long I'm going to go. So, um, yes, the VIP the VIP group is still only 10 bucks until the end of the month. So once July 31st turns over to August 1st, June, July, August, um, it will be 20 bucks a month. So anybody who gets in the VIP group now, it will you'll be locked in at 10 bucks a month. It's like a subscription thing, so um, it won't charge you 20 bucks the next month. It'll always be 10, even when I raise the price to 20 next month. So feel free to hop in, but I will stop talking about that, and then I'll randomly bring it up later. Okay, let me get some, some of these questions. Um, Eric, I use data feed to upload to shops. Do you recommend I also manually upload the same products to my marketplace as well? Also, do you think I should bulk upload same products to all my shops? Thanks. It's up to you, but what I do is basically what you just said. I use the same data feed link on three shops and I will find that one will boom and then it will die and then the other one will do its own little thing but like half as good and then that one will die and then the other one will pick up and do less than that. I've noticed that trend for me. I can't say that that's what everybody will have, but it's literally like I have three shops and they will spike and then go downhill in performance, like but after one another. It's so weird. Um, but yes, I I would manually list on your marketplace. I don't really do that, um, but that's just because I just don't manually list very much. But I'm experimenting a lot more and trying to find things. A lot of the times I experiment with a lot of the stuff you guys hear online whether it's YouTube or the group or whatever. And I just find that it doesn't work for me. So that's why you don't see me talking about it because I only want to talk about stuff that works, for me at least. Because if I'm telling you this should work, but I don't know because I've never done it. Uh, it's kind of weird. All right. As a beginner, realistically, how many hours would you say someone has to put into Facebook Marketplace shops from product research to customer service to be turning at least a four-figure monthly profit? Hmm... Well, really low four figures, like just $1,000, you don't have to put in much. Um, but the problem is, is that it's not a guarantee. Like I can put in the same amount of effort as you put in and you, we could even start at the same starting point. Like you could have the same amount of knowledge I have and I could have the same you have, which I guess is the same thing. But that it, we're not created equal and we're, there's no way for us to know who's better until we start selling because Facebook just kind of does it. Facebook does most of the luck and like giving us the, the luck part. It, it, we don't really have as much control over it as a lot of people think we do. Um, there's definitely things you can learn to improve the odds in your favor, but it, it, there's not, you don't really have much control. So if you're a beginner, you probably got to put in a pretty decent amount up front just to learn what not to do because I mean, this whole channel started with me wanting to start and show everybody what I'm doing wrong and what I'm doing right and just like a realistic follow along with me situation. And I did a lot of stuff wrong. In, the, in my first, you know, however many videos, I'd go back and say a lot of stuff probably isn't, you know, I, I can see myself doing a lot of wrong things and I admit those things in some of those videos. And you know, you spend a lot of time on stuff that doesn't matter and you just waste a lot of time putting in a bunch of effort on the stuff that just sucks and uh, is a waste of your, like, like responding to customers, I think that's the biggest waste of time ever. I think out of 
thousands and thousands of orders that I don't even know how many now. I think maybe once or twice me going back and forth with a customer in Messenger has like caused them to buy something. So if you're putting dollar amounts on your effort, that's one thing I would definitely recommend. Just don't do. If people are asking you questions, just ignore them. They're not buying. People who people who you want are people who are gonna buy without talking to you. So that's that's me. Now if you have problems and customers are messaging after they've ordered, handle those for sure. But don't be playing around with people in your DMs. Okay. I bet I get a lot of buy requests, but no one's buying anything. Any tips? Buy requests. Do you just mean like they're asking if stuff's available or they like want to lower the price? What does that mean? How many shops do you have? I don't know how many total I have. I mean, here's the thing. You don't need a bunch. It's I've got three that I play around on myself. I've got three that um, that automation service that I use where they like the guy has like a team of people who just run it in the background and they like Skype message me for questions and stuff. Um, they handle those and those perform pretty regularly. So when mine are crappy, theirs are just always consistent, which is nice because they're always troubleshooting and fixing things. And it's better than me doing it and being lazy because they've got a team of people. I'm literally in like a Skype group message. I'm pulling it up. You won't see it, but I'm pulling it up. It's got seven people in it. Like from, for just them managing my shops, there's seven people that are on tabs making sure that they've got the right information for me, doing everything. It's really cool. Um, if you're interested in that, it does cost like 10 grand per shop to get it started. And, you know, you're supposed to recoup your profit back and stuff. I've, I'm already a lot of the way through that, but um, my goal is to get like five of those set up. So if you're interested in one of those, if you're one of those people who's just got money sitting around and you're like, screw it, I'll try it, um, that's in the description as well. It's the whole automation call thing. You've probably heard a lot of other people. Every, everybody's got a guy now that does that, and mine's in the description. Okay. Regarding the Facebook dropshipping automation services, oh, um, are they running into problems such as low view sales, etc.? I can't fathom that people are getting their ROI these days using these services. So that's a perfect segue, Wings of Legends. So um, yeah, when, when this started happening, there was a big dip, just like everybody shops, but it wasn't like what the ones I were I was doing myself were. Um, and then because their whole job is to really intentionally make sure that they're at least still getting sales. They, especially if you have multiple, they will try things and experiment and they're learning because instead of me just taking my experience and being like, crap, my stuff's not working. And then trying to like Google stuff or like look in the group or just look on YouTube or whatever. These people are handling, I don't, I don't know how many accounts they have in total, but let's say it's 50 to a hundred accounts. Cause I've got three and I know I found them late. So like, They've got, they've got plenty. And a lot of people from the channel have signed up through me with them. So like I know at least they've got that many more accounts too. They have so much more data points of what is working and what isn't working in product categories and all that kind of stuff that that's why mine kind of always perform at least regularly. The way I like to think of them isn't like, it's like kind of like stocks. You don't really want to bet everything on like a single stock. You want to buy like a mutual fund or an index fund or something because you know it's going to steadily perform. That's kind of how I feel about these. They're like a safer investment. They did cost some money up front, but they're perfectly on schedule to meet their ROI. And before I know it, um, one of them's already almost up and going to be in complete profit. And then the other two are one's up about halfway and the other one's about 25% of the way those things are going to help because once they're totally in profit, I have like a full-time income just based off those things. It's really cool. Um, again, if for some, if you guys got 10 K sitting around or more, I've had people sign up and get multiple from them and it, they, you know, I haven't checked in with them. They haven't sent me any messages, but yeah, that's, that's an option that's in the description, but that's, that's what those are for me. They have so many more data points to, to learn from and so much more to, to gather and be like, okay, well this worked on this one. Let's try it on here. That's failing and all that kind of stuff. Hope that makes sense. I'm already getting out of breath talking. I didn't bring a water. Damn it. I think anyone could join if they pay $10 a month for your private group. Yeah. Douglas, thank you. Um, yes. So 10 bucks a month for the private group right now. Again, that goes up to 20 at the end of the month. 
All right, what's up, Cam? Are you doing the same strategy as Kyle with opening a new shop every day? Uh, no, I'm not, but not because I think that's wrong, just because um, I only have one account that has that option, and I just haven't messed with it yet. With my business and then the YouTube channel, now the VIP group, which I'm way more active in, and then you know doing stuff like this, which I know I don't do lives very much, plus home life. There's so many things I want to try to mess with to tell you guys about it, and that's on my list for sure, but I just don't. No, no, because a lot of the times, too, what you need to do is you have to like start buying business managers and stuff once you start getting too many and buying LLCs um, so that they actually properly function, and it's just like a whole thing. So, All right, manual or automated listings? Thanks. VR, I did answer that earlier in the video. Um, do both. Do whatever is works for you and your schedule. Like I like to automate listings. I like to bulk upload because I just don't find that I have time to do the work that I used to do when it comes to drop shipping manually. I would love to. I am currently doing it for an experimental video that is supposed to be kind of funny, but also hopefully educational. But I don't do it on a regular basis. I like to just I like to hop up in the morning after breakfast or whatever, my wife goes to work, I get on the computer here, literally right here, and um, I like to just think of stuff. I, I prefer it to be fun, so I like to think of things and do it myself, and then just search a couple things, bulk upload the whole page, see what happens. I upload like 500 products in 10 minutes with FVM Fox, link in the description, and then um, I just move along with my day and start working on a video or working on my business. Okay. Is sniping other people's hot sellers worth doing? I'm going to tell you right now, I've never done that. I've never done it. I don't, I get why you do it. I get why people do it. I get that it's a hot practice that works very well for people. I have never gone in and done that. Sorry. Um, but from what I understand, sure. The reason I don't promote that or talk about that um, isn't because it's wrong, but it's just because the more that happens, the lower our profit margins will get over time. So, you know, it's just, and I know this makes sense to you all, but it reminds me like when I was start. so my video production business, when I was starting it with my friend a while back, you know, we were charging a low price because we were new, nobody knew who we were for to make like a 30 second video for a business, for example. And we were charging very low price. And at first we were like, let's just do it for free to get exposure and stuff, which totally is fine. But once you get better and once you get to the point where you can start actually charging what you're worth, and this drop shipping is not about what you're worth or what you're not worth. I mean, we're not doing anything cool here. We're kind of doing this stupid thing on the internet. But if I'm charging less than the people around me charging a normal price, then it actually brings down the quality of what the expectation is from the customer for everybody involved. So yes, I might get some customers, but now those customers, let's say I moved and left, the people who are already here that were charging more than me now suffer as well because I did that, which sucks. So that's a really dumbed down version of that example, but basically I don't like the whole sniping thing just because I think it brings the average of all of our profit margins down and before you know it, we're eBay and Amazon who are those people like, I don't even know why they bother because they have to get so many numbers just to, just to earn any money. Okay. But I like, all that to say, I like high reward for as little work as possible because that's just how I am, so eh, maybe that's why. Okay, also you ever think about t taking your winners, branding them, and selling them as your own? What do you mean, Joseph? You mean like actually creating the products and like selling them from a warehouse myself? Or like just like having a list of Amazon stuff and selling that list or something? Is that what you mean? Sorry, I don't mean to sound stupid. Cameron, so when I bulk upload from some data feed link to all shops, um, hold on. Should I upload everything on the same day or spread it out? Does this method, same products, bulk to all shops, cause suspension? Bulk uploading to all my shops has never caused a suspension. In fact, I haven't had an account suspended since like last year when that was all happening. I, I just haven't run into that issue, even on new shops that I've opened. So I, I don't really see that issue happening. I literally will bulk upload sometimes a thousand products in one day to three or four different shops. 
well, I guess three now because I only run the three myself. And I've never had an issue. If anything, sometimes they all just start selling different stuff. Like, I, I don't have a problem. Is there, I can make a shop without tax information stuff? Yeah, I do it all the time. You don't, you don't have to have, I mean, it's probably better if you have tax. I think what we're learning is, because this thing's always evolving, we're learning or maybe getting hints that having actual tax information stuff for your shop, like business information, helps you but it's not guaranteed. It's just kind of like it's leaning that way. Also, if you're in the video right now, if you're watching, I would love if you guys liked the video. That would help me out a lot. It would help me out a lot, and it just helps me help you. Helps me, so thanks. Okay, what supplier do you use mostly these days? It's still Amazon for the most part. I am doing a lot more eBay, though. Do you still manually upload tracking numbers? Um, you said trackings. I'm assuming you mean tracking numbers. If you mean like through Track Taco or something, yes. But only if I get a crappy tracking number through my email. If it's already FedEx, UPS, or whatever, cool. I've also never been one of those people or drop shippers who, like, as soon as they get or fulfill the order, they go buy a tracking number just to put it into a piece of Facebook so they get paid faster. I actually wait until I get the tracking number to make sure. And then I, if it's real, I upload it. If it's not real, real or it's not good for Facebook, I will go buy one and put it in in its place. Thanks for the likes, everybody. That jumped up a lot. I really, really appreciate it. Okay. How do you get an account out of section four? I don't know. I don't know. And the reason I say I don't know is because I don't really have a good answer. So instead of me giving you a half-ass fake answer, I'd rather just tell you I don't have a good answer for that one. Um, I know a lot of us online try to say like, here's a way to never get that again. And it's not, I mean, it's always the, like the lamest, like half-ass answer because none of us know. So it's just an unfortunate thing. I've had shops that get that or accounts that get that. And then I just, I give up, make another one. And then that one doesn't get it. So that's what I do. Okay. Can you bulk upload on the Facebook marketplace? Kind of. Um, I only use FBM Fox. I do currently have, um, I downloaded ZDrop again, and uh, they, they gave me an account for free so that I could try to promote them, which I'm not going to do. But uh, I, I did, like, pop it back up the other day to kind of, like, see if anything's changed on it, and um, I, I don't like it still. I thought I was hoping that I'd like it again, and I don't. So I don't know if they have a bulk upload option to Facebook Marketplace, but Facebook Marketplace is just a different game, so there's just not a great way to do it. The closest thing you can do is bulk upload products to your FBM Fox account, which is what I do. And then you can just go into your products list and then just list from there if you want. That way, instead of having a bunch of tabs open, you can just have a list in your account and then, you know, click to list it straight to, to Facebook Marketplace. But I don't really do that. Okay. Do you use USA Drop? How was your experience with it? No, I don't. Um, I made a video for them. They paid me to make a video, and uh, I basically told them I don't offer me an offer again <laughs> uh, because they were really like hard to work with and um, didn't communicate very well. Um, and in that video, I even mentioned that like I ha don't use them. I'm just like telling you stuff about them, and like like I read this on their website, and I'm like from what I can tell from their website, and that's kind of how I word everything. So no, I don't use them um, at all. FBM Fox has some issues. How do you fix their uploading? Um, there are always errors when I use it. Yeah, there's there's errors when I use it, but as long as the products still list, I, I still get sales on. I ignore the errors, like unless it's an error that like is making products not list at all. But again, I upload like hundreds of products. I don't care if 50 of them don't upload, which 50 would be really high. Usually it's like 12 or something if you're talking numbers like that. But I did make a video that g at least gets rid of the errors that prevent it from uploading at all. So hopefully that's not what you're worried about. Cameron, why are you so attractive? Cool. Um, who is this? Uh, whoever that is. The fact that it says A on there. I told my wife that I was getting on here, so I don't know if that's who that is, but I don't know. I was born this way. FEM Fox has some picture issues with 500PX. Any advice on it? 
Yeah, I haven't run into that. I don't know what, everybody keeps talking about this 500 pixel thing, which I remember I did make a video talking about how that would be a thing in the future, and now it is a thing, you have to have a certain pixel uh, image. But all the stuff that I uh, that I upload doesn't seem to get that problem. I upload stuff from Amazon, which their stuff that usually doesn't have images like that. So, um, I mean, the only thing you can really do is put your own pictures in there, like still book, still upload it to your stuff, but then just replace the pictures yourself. I mean, I guess it's still faster than manually uploading, but I don't know. Do you mess with eBay dropshipping? I heard it's more reliable. No, I don't. I wish I did. I may in the future, and I've heard the same thing. So I will get to it at some point. Hey, can you explain the automation team? Intuition bet, I did explain the automation team a little bit earlier, I think. Um, I now have a link in all the descriptions of my videos where it takes you to a website and it has Jared who runs it, explain it in a video. So if you wanna learn more about it there, it's pretty straightforward. It costs like 10 grand up front, and they do Facebook shops and marketplace, or they can run a Facebook store for you, or not a Facebook store, an Amazon store, sorry. So I've got an Amazon store and three Facebook shops with them. Okay, do you mess with, oh, I already did that. Do you drop ship on other marketplaces such as Poshmark, Mercari, TradeZ, etc.? No, I don't. I tried Mercari a long time ago when I was first getting started. I hated it, um, but I didn't hate it because of them. I hated it because I made like a super noob mistake, and uh, it was the equivalent of hitting like use Facebook shipping label. So somebody did buy something from me, but it was like I had to print their label, and I was like, dang it, I made like a beginner mistake. So no, I don't. I, I just don't. I need to just hire a VA to try it so I can see if it's something I can recommend to you guys. Okay. Finding my spot really quick. Is it better to have the buy button? For example, I am not ed eligible for the shipping and just people message me and then zero reply. I mean, yeah, it's way better to have the buy button. That's like the only way this works. Um, you need to have the buy button and you need to have shipping or else you're not drop shipping. You're just selling online um, to people in your area. So, yes. How often do your Amazon accounts get banned? For me, it was around 40 to 50 orders in. Um, my first Amazon account got banned. I don't even know how many thousands of orders in. It's a normal Prime account, but I had had it for years. Like I've literally had it for as long as I can remember before I started drop shipping, so I started using it. Um, it eventually got kicked and um, it got kicked off for about two or three months and then I randomly tried to log back in it one day and it was working. So I can buy stuff on it, I do now, but only for personal, I don't drop ship on that one anymore. But um, I'm probably, I don't know, I don't know how many thousands of orders I am in on my second Amazon Prime account. I don't do anything special, I just have another Prime account that I pay for and it's fine. And then I also opened up a business Prime account for one of those VA teams to use that I was talking about um, from Jared, those automation service things for those, the people are hopping in all, and leaving all the time. So I have to kind of re-explain things to you guys. Um, they're using it. I don't even log into it. I just get the emails when they buy stuff. So, I mean, they're, you know, I woke up this morning and they had bought like 15 things overnight when they were working on my business prime account. And I just have a credit card on there. I don't even look at it. They just, they do their thing. Okay. Um, Marketplace or shops for beginners? Marketplace, 100%. Do Marketplace and just use Amazon, and especially Amazon Prime. If you're a beginner, just get started. Make it easy on yourself, do it that way. Don't listen to everybody being like, oh no, you're gonna get banned, all of this crap. It's true, but if you're a beginner, learn with the easy stuff. You're not gonna get kicked off of anything for going small in the beginning. You're gonna be fine. Now. Your marketplace account may get kicked for just a second, but that kind of happens to everybody. It's just part of the, it's part of the growing pains of doing this, and then you get it back, and then you're fine. It's just, just go ahead. Marketplace first. Okay, eBay sucks for me. The fees are too high. I've heard that. Plus, the suspension rate is super sensitive right now. I've heard that. Um, how does your Facebook group work for UK or better for US from products that you suggest? I don't know if it has anything to do with the products. Um, I guess, just to put it out there, I can't promise anything when it comes to anything outside of the US because I've never lived outside of the US. I don't have those same issues that you have when it comes to you know, starting this process. 
and I've never had the experience of fixing or troubleshooting any of those. So I have heard that now people in the UK can do this no problem, but that's literally me hearing that online from a couple people. I can't promise. So I can say that if you're interested in the VIP group, go ahead and sign up for it. Of course, I'm going to tell you that. And then it's not like you're stuck in there. You can leave and end your subscription whenever. Like if you're just like, damn, this isn't working for me, go ahead and leave. But I, I try to put new products in there all the time, um, especially like I'll do it kind of in the moment live where I, I'll do like every month I'll do a big list, which the first month I did and it's still in there, it's like 15 products, five from each of the main three suppliers. And then usually about every few days I put in a random, I'll just check one of my shops, whatever the top seller is, or if something really blew up that day, I just like, I'll get on my phone, get in the VIP group and put a link to the product that blew up. I'll be like, hey, this is selling like crazy for me right now. Feel free to list it. Or, of course, list things around it or similar to it because listing exactly what I list doesn't guarantee results either. But, yeah. Okay. Intuition bet. 10K up front is hefty. Yes, it is. It very much is. Um, but it's if it's only for you. They do have a funding guy. Like, if you're like, dang, I really want to do it, but I don't have 10K, and you're, like, interested, you're enough interested and sold on it that you want to do it, they have a funding guy that like gives you a, a loan kind of deal and like they, they handle it with the profit and everything. Um, that's changed a couple times since I've started, so I don't know exactly how it works, but that's the whole point of booking the call with Jared is to see how all that stuff works. So just if you're interested, check it out. I, I, I'm not going to tell you guys you have to do it. I just know that I do it, so I let you guys know it's an option. How's your marketplace doing recently in relation to shops? Um, I'm not doing much on Marketplace except for my two experimental videos that I'm making and I'm not getting much traction in those. So, but I'm doing more and more in Marketplace every day instead of shops. So, uh, yeah. I mean, that's, to me, everything kind of sucks right now <laughs> for the stuff that I'm doing. So that's why I, a lot of the information I give you now comes from stuff that I do that works and stuff that comes from my VA teams. Okay. Is there a software to upload tracking numbers on Facebook Marketplace when the supplier ships the item, such as TrekkerBot for eBay, or do we still have to add it on our own? I don't use anything that automatically does that. That's kind of, I think, what people just hire VAs for. But uh, I'm sure there's something, but as far as I know, no. Okay. And um, I never really got into using it. I meant to, but uh, for a while, FB and Fox kept promoting that they have like auto order fulfillment. Um, I never really got to use that to talk to you guys about it because I just was busy when it came out. And then I kind of just like it fell under my radar. So I don't know if they still have that. I imagine that maybe they have that set up or if it's just the ordering part. I don't know. I can't promise you anything on that. Hey, Cam, by the hot products and selling on your as your own I meant like buying it oh um, of Aliexpress and selling it on your own Shopify I see and branding it instead of buying Amazon on Facebook I see okay um, that sounds great but I just don't have plans for that that sounds awesome I would love to do that but uh, that's some big picture stuff that I'm not into right now gag do people in your private group communicate a lot well, there's only 60 some people right there and I'm going to cap it at 100 for a, for a little bit. I don't want the group to get too big because you know, if it's too big then those hot selling products that I put in there are don't go as far and I, it's not the the paid group isn't meant to just get as many people in there to make as much money as possible. Those products that those like the money that comes in from the monthly subscription actually just gets turned back around into the shops and everything that I do and the YouTube channel to help as many people as possible and hopefully make those shops more awesome to help provide you know, more information that gets turned back into the VIP group. So I, yeah, I don't want it to get too big because it's not the purpose. The purpose is to just have this like smaller group. I Right now I have no idea where it's gonna go. At most, I don't think I want it to ever pass 500 people. So at first we're gonna stop it at 100 for a little bit, like I said, and they do, to answer your question, which I didn't answer at all, so far, it's a lot more communication. And then it's a lot more of me in there too, like detailed answering people's questions. And I plan to do private lives like this inside the group there. And um, hopefully have like some interview videos for people that are in there um, that have like, you know, people who sell a lot and their, you know, tips and all that kind of stuff. 
But for the most part, the biggest benefit is that it's not just a bunch of people asking if they can be your VA 10 times a day. And uh, there's no spam. Everybody's posts are automatically approved. Um, the only moderator is me. So there's nobody deleting your stuff or comments or, or whatever. And if it does get deleted, I did it. But um, they do communicate a lot better, in my opinion, and a lot more honestly because everybody feels like they're just trying to help each other. But that's my opinion. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. No problem, Aziz. Any other dropshipping avenues you've been considering? I really would like to get into like the normal Shopify dropshipping, not this new stupid Shopify Facebook shop situation, but like the actual Shopify stores. I'd like to get into that even though a bunch of people do it, but I just haven't. I want to at some point. I want to learn that a lot so that I can tell you guys how to do it and help you guys out because, but there's already a lot of YouTubers that do that. So, I, but every time I've tried to learn it from another YouTuber, it just, it's so salesy, which I mean, to be fair, a lot of my videos can be salesy feeling. So I, I get it. Once you get to a certain, and these people are bigger than me, once you get to a certain level, it's like you have an audience and you can sell stuff. It's kind of part of the evolution of all of this, but I still think that you need to be trying to actually help people learn stuff. So I haven't done it yet. Can, or can you have multiple shops on one account? Thank you. Hope you're doing well. Or great. Yes, you can. Um, let me see exactly the three that I manage right now. What I do. Okay. So I have, you know what? Let me go to business manager. And that's the thing. They Facebook does not help you figure out what's what because they've got commerce managers, business manager, your individual shops, and then your catalog accounts, and then your ads accounts. And it's just like, it's so confusing. And it's because it's not meant to be something that, you know, you're supposed to be worrying about all the time. But where is, there it is. <sighs> it's not one to open up. I know for sure I have three under one commerce manager. So, okay, commerce manager. So I've got three business accounts. I've got two shops under one business account and three shops under another business account. And then I've got another Shopify Facebook page that just failed instantly um, on another business account. So I have, and these are all underneath one primary Facebook account. So, I mean, technically under one Facebook account, I've got like six or seven shops going on right now. So I think, yeah, it's really not too big of a deal. Okay, what um, what price plan do you use on for FB and Fox? I have two FB and Fox accounts, I think, maybe three. Um, one, I, Both of them are the $99 plan. That's what I use. Cameron, while watching your live, created a new page and shop with Marketplace enabled. I bulk uploaded 100 products instantly. I'm gonna try your strategy now. Thank you for your advice. Eric, good luck. That's awesome. It's so you're already like ready to go. You've already got marketplace enabled and all that. Damn. Maybe you've got one of those cool accounts that lets you instantly get stuff. I mean, you book uploaded a hundred instantly. I challenge you to change that one to a six and do 600 products. And because Eric did that and I think it's cool, I am going to bring up one thing before I move on to the next question which is where I th what I think some people should be preparing for for products. I haven't done it yet, so it's just a throw out their idea, but a category to list from. And I say this because I do this video production work and um, I know that in, it's not August, but it's September and October. So people are planning for September and October and it's not Halloween. We're not talking about Halloween here. Um, weddings so september and october are our busiest time of year and everybody here where i live who are videographers and wedding photographers september and october are the first wed wedding months to book like they're the first like first month in your calendar that's just solid black or whatever whatever you want to call your full calendar and um i've in the past i haven't done it lately because i totally forgot about it but i was just thinking about it the other day in the past i've sold a bunch of stuff whether it's like you know, white tablecloths and um, keepsake items for weddings and like certain candle holders that are part of centerpieces and all sorts of stuff like that, backdrop things, confetti type things. 
um, just bridal stuff in general that are kind of like easy stuff. I've, I've sold giant pop-up tents for outdoor sections of a, like a nice outdoor wedding. You might start listing those things and I can't guarantee they're going to sell right now or, or ever, but usually from now until September and even into October, those things are selling. They were last year for me and I never told anybody about it, but I'm telling you now, maybe, maybe start listing some wedding related stuff. And you know, when I say listed wedding related stuff, or when I say to list anything, don't just list exactly what I say. Think about it for a second. You're like, okay, well, if weddings are happening, bachelorette parties are happening. You know, a bridal party, you know, events are happening. There's going to be people using party buses and stupid stuff like that. So they're going to want stupid cups that have wedding stuff on them. Start looking at that stuff. All right. All right. My FBM Fox extension won't let me log in. Should I email them? When that happens to me, because again, these softwares are, they're, they're made by real people who aren't Facebook. They don't have the resources of Google. So they don't work 100% of the time and they have bugs and they're, it's a small company. I like to just restart my whole ass computer <laughs> or I close out of everything, which sucks because I usually have so many tabs open, but I kind of give it a break and I reopen it back up and it usually works instantly for me at that point. But that's just me. Um, but if you're if you continue to have the problem, yes, email them. But like I have his phone number, the guy who made it, and I will personally text him sometimes, even though that's probably like an abuse of me having his number when I personally need help. <laughs> and uh, usually, it's literally him being like, "Dude, like, just exit out of Chrome and reopen Chrome." And I do that, and I'm like, "All right, yeah, it worked. Thanks." <laughs> like I just look stupid, so I would do that. But if you if it keeps happening, definitely email them. All right. Eric, also, does this mean my account is totally trusted by Facebook and good? Eric, maybe. There's no guarantee. There still might be a time where that Facebook shop gets, like, kicked for a second and you have to, you know, contact them to get it, like, put back. It's just, I think a lot of these accounts get shut down as almost like a precaution. Like, as soon as it starts selling, they're like, okay, this account made it through the test. Let's pump the brakes on it and have somebody review it really quick and make sure it's not a scammer or whatever. So, if you do, don't be surprised, but just, you know contact Facebook, do the whole thing, go through all the crap and just try to get it back up and running. Probably won't be here on here very long, so we'll we'll see what's up. <sighs> on Amazon, are almost all the tracking numbers TBA or do you get track taco for that or do you use? So on Amazon, I would say 75%, maybe 50% of the time. No, one out of every three is usually TBA or the opposite. Sometimes it's one out of every three is not TBA. So Regardless, just expect 50% plus of your tracking numbers being TBA and then use Track Taco for when that happens. So I just wait. Once I get the email, if it comes back as TBA, I'm like, damn it. And then I have to go in and do my Track Taco stuff. All right. Hello, Veronica. Appreciate you stopping by the live. All right. Can you show us how you input chargebacks on your spreadsheet, please? So chargebacks, because I still have a chargeback from like two months ago that still isn't settled. And I made a video about it and it still isn't settled. So what I do is I just simply, whatever the chargeback is, plus the fee, which is so annoying. The fee is like 20 bucks or something. I can't remember, maybe it's 40, I don't know. What I do is I just, at the end of that month, at the bottom of my spreadsheet, underneath all the orders, I scroll all the way to the bottom to where there's no orders left. And then I just literally underneath where the profit column is, I just type in negative whatever that is because how I count my profit is I'll just highlight the whole column and whatever the spreadsheet shows as the sum in the bottom corner, it will factor in any negatives I put in there. So for that, I will also put in like if I had to if I had to buy you know credits for a Track Taco or pay for something or you know fix a customer thing or just refund somebody like I will just type in at the bottom if it's a special case anything that I spent that I think should technically be deducted from the profit that I made. That's what I do. Okay. Hey, Alex. Nice of you to stop by. All right, uh, Beauty Queen. From making 6K to 8K per month in Marketplace, now I'm getting 500 to 600 profit in whole month. Sales are very slow, no views. I tried everything, watched millions of videos, tried all the tricks, no luck. Beauty Queen, I feel you. I feel you. I will say, though, that that five to 600 bucks a month is a hell of a lot more than a lot of people are making right now. Um, so I love that you made 
six to K or six K to eight K. And I want you to get back to that as quick as possible. Um, but you're doing something right. So don't discount yourself there. Don't, don't act. I don't want you to feel like you're failing cause you're not. Everybody's taking a hit and I know I've seen it in the groups. I've seen it in people's YouTube videos. I've done, I've seen it all. We blame it on everything. And, um, to be fair, like it is the economy. It is Facebook changing their algorithms. It, it, it um, I don't know who it was just the other day. They sent, they posted it in both groups and they sent me a private message from a, a conversation they had with Facebook meta support. Um, let me find it. But it was, somebody had a conversation with them and they basically were like, here's the thing. Um, Facebook themselves was in a group chat or in a chat with a, one of us who was trying to solve some stuff. And they said, I cannot give you a proper explanation of the issue or that issue. Unfortunately, it's something that I do not have the information to justify. What I'm seeing by my experience is that the organic reach is dropping due to the amount of business and pages that are being created and with the competition increasing and the algorithm struggles to show everything to everyone. Sometime, or Some things are just getting less exposure. So, I mean, that's fa somebody at Facebook themselves saying that. So, um, I just saw Joe Rogaine. Thanks for stopping by and I'll get to everybody. I'll get to Alex here in a second. It's true. Like the economy does suck right now. And we can say like, well, if that was true, Amazon would be sucking and eBay would be sucking. And it's just like, well, they are, that's just, they have so much more volume and so much more of a legitimate, like their whole business is e-commerce. Facebook's isn't. So Facebook is trying to, Facebook's in the middle of this algorithm thing that they're constantly evolving in the middle of a downturn econ economically. So, I mean, literally I'm seeing YouTuber after YouTuber and I'm going to be starting making them myself probably and doing more on my TikTok account and all that. Follow my TikTok account, follow my Instagram account, follow all my accounts. But um, I'll be starting talking about recession stuff soon and how to save money and how to prepare for things and stuff because that's just the name of the game and this stupid entertainment stuff that we do, but it's because I actually do want to help people. So I want to come up with what I think is smart and I want to t educate people on that and what I've done in the past when, with other downturns and stuff. So the economy thing is a real thing. Like literally people are coming out of the woodwork and be like, Hey, you know, recession, you know what I mean? And it's, it's starting to feel exactly like when COVID started and you know, COVID, like when it first started to get a little bit real, like March, 2020 or so, at least where I live, um, it was important to people way before that in other parts of the world. But, um, you know, we were all kind of like, oh, God, it's just a thing. Like, it'll pass, whatever. And then before you know it, we're all wearing masks and can't go anywhere. So that's kind of how it feels right now. It's that, like, little, like, tipping point where we're like, I don't know. I mean, probably it's not that big of a deal. Who cares? All the old people on the Internet keep crying about Bitcoin and stuff or whatever. Like, who cares? It's going to be fine. I'm not going to die. Like, but... You know, around the corner, we're probably going to be experiencing not so much fun stuff. I mean, we're already seeing it. Grocery stores, gas stations, all that stuff. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. So, I mean, if to think that that's not affecting people just impulse buying on Facebook, people are getting scared. And when people are scared, they don't really like to buy stupid trinkets on Facebook. So, I don't know. I mean, me and my wife love shopping and we're still, we're starting to buy less online and we're fine. So I just, one of those things, one of those things. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Alex, my pleasure. I'm always here for the value you drop time and time again. Thank you, Alex. Vera. Um, I'm surprised when I, I was, I probably answered these Alex after your message. Stolen most of the big spenders. Oh, well, yes. So after I answer Vera's question, I'm probably going to hop off. Please, if you're about to leave, like the video first. I would greatly appreciate it. And join the VIP group if you're interested. Again, at the end of the month, it jumps up twice the price. So it's 20 bucks a month at the end of the month. If you get in now at $10 a month, you're locked in at 10 bucks a month until you decide to leave. So that's in the description. I would love to see you there. Um, we're at 60 some people. I'm going to cap it at 100 for a little bit. So and then at that point, it might be more of a waiting list. Like if somebody leaves, I'll add one person. So just put that, I'm putting that out there. It's worth it to me. I put a lot of free products and stuff in there. And I'm hoping to do some giveaways for like gift cards and stuff. Okay. Vera, I was surprised when I realized Facebook don't have an email or phone number as a support. Like, like you are a billion dollar company. Shake my head. eBay, on the other hand, is on point with their customer service. So 
Vera, I would I would feel the same way. The problem is, to me, exactly what you said is why I would imagine they don't have an email or a phone number is because they're a billion dollar company and so huge that they're like, who are we kidding? We're not gonna be able to help anybody. There's we're gonna get like a million people a day crying about stuff. But eBay is the same way, and if they have that information, you should be fine. I know Amazon's got pretty decent customer service stuff, and they can pretty much fix any problem I have. It does suck sometimes, especially when you get an account shut down. But yeah, you would think they have that stuff better figured out because we'll have like a cool Facebook support link or something and then it won't work and you're like what the hell so yeah all right guys I'm gonna hop off all my links in the description per use I really appreciate you stopping by subscribe if you haven't already if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel I think about you at night and I get upset I get super upset I cry. My wife has to be like, honey, why are you crying? And I'm like, because. And I explain it to her in this pouty, snotty voice. And just know that you contribute to that. So if you don't want to contribute to that, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I greatly appreciate it. Okay, bye. I'm not going to talk to you anymore.